Hello students, my name is Dr. Priya Mahajan. In this session, we will study the income consumption curve and angle curve. So first, we will study about the income consumption curve. With a given money income to spend on goods, given prices of two goods and given an indifference map, the consumer will be in equilibrium at a point in an indifference map. We are now interested in knowing the reaction of the consumer in regard to his purchases of the goods when only his money income changes but the prices of the goods and his taste and preferences remaining unchanged or you can say remain constant. Income effect shows this reaction of the consumer. Thus, the income effect means the change in consumer's purchases of the goods as a result of a change in his money income. The graphical presentation of income effect is given here in figure 1. So, in figure 1 it can be seen that with given prices and a given money income as indicated by the budget line P1 L1, the consumer is initially in equilibrium at Q1 on the indifference curve IC1 and is having OM1 quantity of X commodity and ON1 quantity of Y commodity. Now suppose that income of the consumer increases. With his increased income, he would be able to purchase larger quantities of both the goods. As a result, budget line will shift upward and will be parallel to the original budget line P1 L1. Let us assume that the consumer's money income increases by such an amount that the new budget line is P2 L2. Here we can see that consumer's income has increased by L1 L2 in terms of X or P1 P2 in terms of Y. With budget line P2 L2, the consumer is in equilibrium at Q2 on indifference curve IC2 and is having OM2 of X and ON2 of Y. Thus, as a result of the increase in his income, the consumer buy more quantity of both the goods. Since he is on the higher indifference curve IC2, he will be better off than before. That is, his satisfaction will increase. If his income increase further so that the budget line shift to P3 L3, the consumer is in equilibrium at Q3 on indifference curve IC3 and is having greater quantity of both the goods than at Q2. Consequently, his satisfaction further increases. In figure 1, the consumer's equilibrium is shown at a still further higher level of income and it will be seen that the consumer is in equilibrium at Q4 on indifference curve IC4 when the budget line shifts to P4 L4. As the consumer's income increases, he switches to higher indifference curve and as a consequence enjoys higher level of satisfaction. If now various points Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 showing consumers equilibrium at various levels of income are connected together, we will get what is called income consumption curve. Income consumption curve is thus the locus of equilibrium points at various levels of consumer's income. Income consumption curve traces out the income effect on the quantity consumed of the goods. Income effect can either be positive or negative. Income effect for a good is said to be positive when with increase in income of the consumer, his consumption for the good also increases. This is the normal good case. But in case of inferior goods, as the income of the consumer rises, the goods which are considered inferior by the consumer, its consumption fall as he substitute superior goods for them when his income rises. For example, in India, food grains such as maize, jawar, bajra are considered as inferior goods and therefore when the income rises, people shift to the consumption of superior variety of food grains like wheat and rice.
Similarly, most of the Indian people regard Vanaspati ghee to be inferior and therefore as they become richer, they reduce its consumption and use desi ghee instead. Now we will study the graphical representation of inferior goods. In case of inferior goods, indifference map would be such as to yield income consumption curve which either slopes backward that is toward the left as shown in figure 2 or downward to the right as in figure 3. It would be noticed from the two figures that income effect becomes negative only after a point. It signifies that only at a higher ranges of income some goods become inferior goods and up to a point their consumption be behaves like those of normal goods. In figure 2, income consumption curve slope backward that is upward to the left bends towards the y axis. This shows good x to be an inferior good since beyond point Q2 income effect is negative for good x and as a result its quantity demanded falls as income increases. In figure 3 income consumption curve slopes downward to the right beyond point Q2 that is bent towards the x axis. This signifies that good Y is an inferior good because as beyond point Q2 the income effect is negative for good Y and as a result its quantity demanded falls as income increases. Now we will study the income consumption curve in case of normal goods. Normal goods can be either necessities or luxuries depending upon whether the quantities purchased of the goods by the consumers increases less than or more than proportionately to the increase in his income. So this is very important here that if the quantity purchased of a commodity increases less than in proportion to the increase in income then the commodity is known as necessity. On the other hand if the quantity purchased of a commodity increases more than proportionately to increase in income it is called a luxury. So these two statements are very important as they very much clear about that what commodities are considered necessities and what are luxuries. In figure 4 we can see three different slopes of income consumption curve. The slope of income consumption curve ICC1 is increasing which implies that quantity purchased of the commodity X increases less than proportionately to the increase in income. Therefore in this case of ICC1 good X is necessity and good Y is luxury. On the other hand the slope of income consumption curve ICC3 is decreasing which implies that the quantity purchased of good X increases more than proportionately to increases in income and therefore in this case good X is luxury and good Y is necessity. It will be seen from figure 4 that the income consumption curve ICC2 is a linear curve passing through the origin which implies that the increases in the quantities purchased of both the goods are rising in proportion to income and therefore neither good is a luxury or a necessity. If the income effect is positive for both the goods X and Y the income consumption curve will slope upward to the right as we saw previously in figure 1. But upward sloping income consumption curve to the right for various goods may be different, may be of different slopes as shown in figure 4 in which income consumption curves with varying slopes are all sloping upward and therefore indicate both goods to be normal goods that is necessity and luxury having positive income effect. If the income effect is negative, income consumption curve will slope backward to the left 
as ICC dash in figure 5 if goods X happens to be in an inferior goods and income consumption curve will bend towards X axis if good Y happens to be an inferior good. In figure 4 and 5 various possible shapes which income consumption curve can take are shown. A noteworthy point is that it is not the indifference curves which explain why a good happens to be an inferior good. In other words, indifference curve do not explain why income effect for a good is negative. Indifference curves only describe or illustrate the inferior good phenomenon. Next we will study the income consumption curve and angle curve. Ernst Engel was a German statistician. According to Engel studies, as the income of a family increases, the proportion of its income spent on necessities such as food falls and that spent on luxuries uh, consisting of industrial goods and services increases. So Ernst wants to say here that generally the poor families spent relatively large proportion of their income on necessities whereas rich families spend a relatively large part of their income on luxuries. But this is very important line here that when the income increases there is decline in the proportion of income spent on food and other necessities and increase in proportion of income spent on luxuries. This change in the pattern of consumption expenditure is called angle curve. The angle curve dealt with the relationship between income and expenditure on different goods but in order to keep our analysis simple here we will describe and explain the relationship between income and quantity purchased of goods. However, both types of relation will convey the same information about individual's consumption behavior or behavior as in our analysis of Engel's curve the prices of goods are held constant. The curve showing the relationship between the level of income and quantity purchased of particular commodities has therefore been called angle curve. It should be borne in mind that income consumption curve and angle curve are not the same. It is worth noting that like the demand curve depicting relationship between price and quantity purchased, other factors remaining the same, angle curve shows the relationship between income and quantity demanded. Other inferences on quantity purchase such as price of goods, consumer preferences are assumed to be held constant. The income consumption curve provides the necessary information required to draw the angle curve. The derivation of angle curve from the income consumption curve is illustrated in figure 6. For driving the angle curve from income consumption curve, we plot level of income on the y axis and quantity purchased of a commodity on the x axis. Now look at the panel A. It shows that consumption of commodity x increases from Q, OQ1 to OQ2 to OQ3 as income increases from B1 to B2 to B3 and consumer moves from equilibrium from R to S to T. In panel A, income level has shown on vertical axis. Now in panel B, level of income is represented on vertical axis and quantity purchase of commodity X is on horizontal axis. Although income consumption curve and angle curve are not identical, the latter correspond to the former. This is the shape of angle curve depends on the shape of the income consumption curve. Each point of an angle curve corresponds to a relevant point of income consumption curve. Thus R of the angle curve correspond to point R on ICC curve 
as seen from panel B. Angle curve for normal good is upward sloping which shows that an income increases, consumer buys more of a commodity. The slope of angle curve drawn in panel B equals delta M over delta Q where delta M stands for change in income and delta Q for change in quantity demanded of good X and has a positive sign. It is important to note that the slope of angle curve in panel B increases as income increases. This indicates that with every equal increase in income, expansion in quantity purchase of goods successively declines. This upward sloping angle curve with increasing slope as income rises depicts the necessities, consumption of which increases relatively less as income rise. Thus, in angle curve drawn in panel B, quantity purchased of the commodity increases with the increase in income but at a decreasing rate. This shape of angle curve is obtained for necessities. Now we study the angle curve in case of luxury good. The angle curve drawn in figure 7 is upward sloping but is concave. This implies that slope of an angle curve delta M by delta Q is declining with the increase in income. That is, in the angle curve of a commodity depicted in figure 7, the equal increments in income results in successively larger increase in the quantity purchased of the commodity. This implies that as the consumer becomes richer, he purchased relatively more of the commodity. Such a commodities are called luxuries. Example of luxuries are air travel, luxury cars, costly woolen suits, air conditioners, costly fruits, etc. Angle curve in case of inferior goods. In case of inferior goods, consumption of the commodity declines as income increases. Angle curve of an inferior good is drawn in figure 8 which is backward bending indicating a fall in the quantity purchased of the good as income increases. In last angle curve of a neutral good. An extreme case of angle curve is a vertical straight line as drawn in figure 9. This represents the case of a neutral commodity which is quite unresponsive to the increase in income. The angle curve of the shape of a vertical straight T line shows that a person goes on consuming the same amount of a commodity whatever the level of his income. For example, the quantity of common salt purchased by a family remains the same determined as it is by food habits with the increase in their income. So this is about the angle curves under the different commodity. So students, this is all about this session. Thank you and happy learning.